It's been a little over a year since Microsoft added the new polling app to Teams meetings, and it started out pretty basic with just the ability to add some multiple choice questions, let people pick from those choices. Over the past year, though, there's been some very welcome updates to the meeting polls app inside of Teams, and I wanted to focus on two of the latest capabilities in this video. So let's take some time to check out quizzes in Microsoft Teams meetings and the latest update, Word Clouds, all powered by Microsoft Forms. So I've got a meeting here. Alex is running the meeting and there's six people in it. And I need to start out by adding the app from the little dot, dot, dot menu. So I'm going to click the dot, dot, dots right here at the top. And then I'm going to click add an app. This comes up with several apps that are optimized for Microsoft Teams meetings. But what we're going to focus on is the one labeled forms. I believe that this name is changing to polls in the near future. So just be on the lookout for the Microsoft Forms icon up at the top. So we're going to click on that to add it to the meeting. And it's going to say, hey, you're adding the polls app. Yes, I want to do that. So I hit save. And then we're presented with this little polls interface along the side. It's important to note that if you schedule your meeting ahead of time and you're preparing for your meeting, you can actually go into the meeting details so if I open up the meeting from my calendar and I hit edit because I scheduled this meeting, I can go in here and at the top, I can hit this plus button and also add the polls app. And then what that gives me is it gives me this tab within the team's meeting before the meeting even starts where I can go ahead and create my polls. I just wanted to point that out, but what we're doing is we're creating polls inside the meeting. I just wanted to let you know that that's an option as well. So what we're going to start out with is we're going to create a new poll. And I've done a video before about the ability to do a multiple choice poll right here. In this video, we're going to start out by talking about a multiple choice quiz. And basically what that means is it's a multiple choice poll, but there is a correct answer for the question that you're asking. So I can do, um, I can ask a question right here like uh, what's the best game console out now. And I can list out a few options. So I can say like Nintendo Switch, PS5. I can add another option here, Xbox Series S or X. And when I want to mark a best answer or the correct answer, all I need to do is click the little check box in the circle next to that option. So I would say that Nintendo Switch is the best console out right now. And now I can pick which one of these, but it's only gonna let me pick a single best answer. If I want to though, I can click multiple answers. So if I toggle that on, now these turn into check boxes instead of radio buttons. And now I can select two answers. So Xbox and Nintendo Switch are the two correct answers in this case. Now at the bottom, we have the same options that we had before. I can allow other presenters, if they have the presenter role, they can co-author this so they can add to it and edit if they want to. And then um, I can keep the responses anonymous or I can make them seen. And then I wanna automatically show the results to the audience after they vote. So we're gonna go ahead, just turn all of those on and we're gonna hit save to prepare to launch our meeting poll. So we've got our meeting poll ready to go right here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this out to my audience by clicking the launch button right here at the bottom. So we're gonna click launch. And then now that poll comes up for everybody in the meeting. So I can click PS5 right here and hit submit. And you'll see that I selected the wrong answer. So it's marked red, this is your response. 100% of the people marked that wrong. If we bring a screen over, she can click on Nintendo Switch and hit submit. And she got the right answer. So one of the right answers. So she can click done and then that goes away for her. And then we could do the same thing with Patty. She can select multiple answers if she wants to. So she can select both of those and hit submit. And then you see she got those 50% of respondents picked that. 25% picked PS4, 25% picked the Xbox Series X. 
So we can go through and we can grab all of the other options here. So I'm just going to make all these other people do a vote. And I think I got everybody. There we go. So I can see that everybody has voted. I have six responses right here. And then I can see that 50% of people said that the Nintendo Switch was the best console. 38% said the PS5 and 13% said the Xbox Series X. So me as the organizer and the uh, one of the presenters, I have the polls app. I can actually monitor in live real time. I can see what the answers are as they're rolling in. And then I can go ahead down here at the bottom. I can click that arrow and I can click close poll right there from the list of options. Now the poll is closed out for everybody in this meeting. That is the idea of creating a multiple choice quiz. So there's a correct answer from the list of answers. One thing that I really wish you could do here is I wish that there was some type of scoring mechanism because it would be really nice if I could create a whole bunch of questions before the meeting starts. Like say I'm teaching a class about OneDrive and I wanna have several checkpoints throughout. It would be nice if it like kept score. So at the end of the meeting, you got like a scorecard that said like how many things you got right, how many things you got wrong, what your percentage is, maybe assign points or a point value to the different questions. That would be pretty nice. But right now there's no scoring mechanism available in this. It's just a kind of a fun, you know, lighthearted, uh, did you get the answer right or wrong? And then you move on to the next question or the next poll that gets launched. So the next thing that I want to talk about is an even newer feature, and that is the ability to create an open text response and then visualize that as a word cloud. So again, we're going to go to the polls app right here. It's already available. We're going to create a new poll by clicking on this plus button at the top. And then this time, we're gonna select the word cloud poll. So we're gonna visualize open text responses in a word cloud. So we can click on that option and then we can you know, enter any kind of question we want and then leave it open for people to respond with free text. So we can say, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? <clears throat> we leave the, the answer blank because it's just gonna be open text. And then we can share the word cloud. So if we want to kind of crowdsource the word cloud, we can show that to people or we can not show the word cloud. Um, that would depend on if you think that the results are going to influence other people. Like they see one of the words getting bigger and bigger. They might enter that word as well and kind of add weight to that word. So you can choose not to send it or you can choose to show the word cloud. We're going to leave it up. And then you can keep the responses anonymous if you want to. So if you're asking like, how are you feeling or what do you think about this and you want it to be anonymous, you can go ahead and check that box. And then again, I can allow people to co-author if they're a presenter. So we're going to hit save. And again, this becomes a draft um, poll in the side of my, uh, my poll app right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch this poll. So across the board, all of my users on my other screen, they see a pop-up that says, um, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? And they can enter whatever text they want. So Alex, he's gonna put in here chocolate and he's gonna hit submit. And as he hit submit, and it says successfully submitted, everybody else saw the word chocolate pop up in real time on their screen. So like Miriam, she can also put chocolate. She can enter that right there. And then Patty will bring her over. She can enter like Rocky Road. And then we'll see that other option pop up right here. If we go over to the others, you can see in real time, all three of those windows all got the word Rocky Road in the lower corner. So that worked for those. Now let's get these guys out of the way here. Get rid of Miriam. And then we're gonna watch this as I go over to my other screen and enter some more options. I've got three more people that are able to vote here. So one is gonna put in vanilla and let's say two more are gonna do chocolate, if I can spell correctly. 
chocolate and chocolate. So you see in real time as the responses are rolling in, now there's a sixth response. The, the words get bigger and bigger or they get smaller or they rearrange based off of the items in that word cloud. Now, something else that's pretty cool about this word cloud that gets generated is if you mouse over the options, you can see how many people entered that word. So you can see four people put the word chocolate, one person did vanilla, one person did Rocky Road. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and we're going to close out this poll. And after I close the poll, I can still mouse over and see how many people did that. But because the poll is closed and there's no more answers coming in, it can actually calculate a percentage. So I can see that 67% of the respondents were, were chocolate and 17% were vanilla, 17% were Rocky Road. So that's how you can do a, um, a word cloud inside of your Microsoft Teams meeting. And of course, you can export the results as well. Now, this is just kind of a hypothetical, but I wanted to show you a real world example that I did just yesterday in our Microsoft Teams uh, champions meeting. So if I bring up the champions meeting here, so if I bring up my champions meeting, um, what I did is it was an intro to or a recap of Microsoft Ignite, like what exciting things are coming out. So I asked at the end of the meeting, what are you most excited about from Ignite? And if I click on more, this is just from the meeting chat, I can open up the results and see the results of that word cloud. So I had 21 people respond and I can mouse over these and see that nine people said they're excited about loop. Um, somebody said loop by far. So it didn't really combine those two. It has them as two separate little, you know, um, answer options. So, but I can kind of see visually that like loop is definitely winning. And then uh, there's a few more, like um, two people said metaverse, one person, one person said power apps, three people just said teams in general, one person says immersive environment. So that would probably be along the lines of the metaverse or the Microsoft mesh announcements that came out. So I can kind of get a sense of like what people are most excited about. And I think it looks like people are most excited about loop by far. That's where I should make most of my content is about loop coming up. And then probably a second option is talking about um, the VR experiences or the Microsoft mesh inside of Microsoft Teams. That's kind of like the number two winner. I've got some ones that say meeting options as well. So talking about the co-organizer, stuff like that that's coming up. So this is just a real world example of how you can take this data and you can use it and actually do something with it. So that's it for this one. There's two pretty basic but pretty awesome features uh, to get a little bit more interactivity and engagement out of your Teams meetings. Let me know in the comments below, are you more excited for the word cloud option or are you more excited for the ability to have quizzes and meetings? As always, thanks for watching.